Welcome to the Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. This episode is all about movies being made from our precious toys. TV show is finally coming to an end. Where we are with summer movies and our spoiler preview of Cobweb. My name is Aaron Peterson. Joining me today, I'm our fellow hoes, Amanda Sink. Hello, hello. You're going to make John sad. <laughs> Troy Heinrichs. What's up, everybody? And last but never least, John Davenport. Hi. You just hate oh, going it's last. Eeyore. You just hate going last. Why do you hate it so much? Because <laughs> it doesn't make me feel special. Oh. You're always special. No, I'm not. You just don't care about Troy going last, though. Or Amanda going but last. Troy, as long but as Troy showed up last. <laughs> it's true. Should it be on who shows up first? That way you would always be first. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what? That's what we're going to do from now on. We're going to go in the order in which people arrive for the podcast recording. So Aaron introduces himself. No, Aaron just introduces me first and then himself. And then myself. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> He's true. usually first. He works from home. It's fair. I need somebody to hold the door for me. You know, I'm fragile. Let me in. Uh, remember, you can find more information at thehollywoodoutsider.com, as always. And uh, Troy and I can officially celebrate. We're retired. Woo! The Blacklist Exposed is done. I think we're do- we might do one series wrap-up thing where we listen or we-, we answer Patreon questions. But overall, we're done. We're done watching the damn show. I don't have to watch an episode ever again. Ever. Uh, you might go back and watch Kate May every now and then. No, no, I probably won't. So uh, let me ask you, Troy, this, this is over. This, this adventure is over. We, we did that podcast for, I did it for nine years. You did it for 10 because I, I joined the second season when you obviously needed some help making that better. Um, how do you feel? Tell me how you feel to be done doing a dedicated podcast to one TV show for 10 years. This is also the last TV podcast out of all the TV podcasts I've done. The last one standing. So I'm officially now done with TV fan show podcasts as well. Oh, you wouldn't go back and do another one? I mean, I would, but I was too late on the silo train because there's already a couple great ones out there. Mm. Because once I saw the ending of silo, I was like, damn it, I should have podcasted on this one. Um, but no, I, I'm, I'm fully dedicating time and effort to the hoe going forward. Aww. I mean, you we, and I, we might get a phone call from, from John Bokenkamp. It's possible. We might. That is possible. There's, there's something in the works. You we'll can't see. talk about it. But if it happens. I just did. Ha ha! I would this come feels out like a rude that. tease. It does. Yeah. I, you like and can it? I be a part of it too? I mean, can I yeah, show Yeah, what up? about me? Um, what's up, yeah, guys? Yeah, guys. What about that? What about that, huh? Well, Where what, was the invitation? Yeah. Sharing is caring. Hey. Hey, we'll let, we'll let you, you watch oh. the episode first and give us your opinion, and then we'll include it in the fan feedback section. How's yeah. that sound? <laughs> You're such a dick. I can't wait to smack you the next time I, I see you. I love that. That's brilliant. <laughs> you can always go to the Blacklist Exposed and hear that whole full rundown we did on this episode. But I got to say, Troy and I, like Troy overall, bummed, happy, bummed with the finale. Oh, with, the, the, with the actual finale finale? Yeah. Of the Blacklist. It's over. It's done. Man. Um, I mean, I, I stick with my stance that any TV show that will have people talking about it 10 years later is going to be a show that's going to go down in the history books as a good show, right? Um, people are going to still debate till we're blue in the face about who red was because you never got a direct answer uh, yeah, in did. the, in the finale. Um, <laughs> yeah, she did. You, not the finale. Well, they even the like finale. touched on it in the finale. I just... Whatever. It was a very small scene that was like the, which is what we were told by the powers that be, that there would be indirect confirmation. And there certainly was an indirect confirmation. There was. In one of the scenes of the finale. Um, but it was scenes. pretty, pretty, pretty spelled out in season eight in uh, Nachalo and Konyets on what the actual identity was. Um, but the, the way it, <laughs> the way it ended. Oh Don't spoil God. it. Cause some people are priced, you know, it still just came out it. just recently. Yeah, yeah. People are still catching up on Netflix. 
no, there's a lot of people that haven't seen season 10 yet because it doesn't drop on Netflix until August or September. But man. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Just, wow. Let me, let me spin it this way. And actually we can inclu- include the group because I feel like they're being left out. You guys come back aboard. Are you still there? Are you, are you still podcasting? No, I'm, I'm entering a giveaway for D&D dice, but I'm here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How about you You roll, guys can speak for, to this? Roll for dodging. Is that what we say? Yeah. Aaron? <laughs> you can. Uh, <laughs> it's just like Charlie's Theron and Prometheus, man. Left or right. Just go left or right. Just go left or right. Why do you got to be in a straight line? That's stupid. Yeah. What do we like alligator? Zigzag. If you saw Blacklist, you get it. So does it ruin a show for you guys if a series whiffs the final episode? Like, if you loved it before, do you still love it? You know, I'm going to have to say because of my love for uh, How I Met Your Mother that um, if it was the final episode and yet I still love the show, I can go back to it and revisit it to the point where the final episode makes more sense to me, then uh, it there are moments where my initial feelings are probably just acute in the moment of the ending of the show um you know that final season of lost like you know so a lot of people feel like that was a whiff uh as far as the final episode goes i really felt like i could have gone either way when i revisit it i don't feel like it's a whiff anymore so i make sure that my feelings are not acutely affecting my appreciation from this point on of something that I'm watching and I'm able to really process what it is that I'm saying or seeing or because there's obviously a story being told that I'm missing out on. But you're saying you have to watch it a second time to view it in that objective stance in order yes. to... Okay. Yes. Um, I am not ever watching Blacklist nine, seasons 9 and 10 again. I don't give a shit what the context is i I will not i would watch up to season eight i love the season eight finale but because that answered exactly who red is but i would never i don't give a shit amanda go ahead so specifically in the context of the blacklist i had watched the first season and i think a little bit of season two and i really liked the show it just happened to be one of those that was less priority to some of the other shows that were out there and then just kind of fell off my radar as too many seasons went by. No, we're talking like in every show, though. Like, I know, like I know. A, like a- but I first want to address that. For this situation in particular, because I've followed the spoilers for this show. You're just fascinated <laughs> yes. by the whole, who is Red Reddington again? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I think, you know, based off of what was seen and explained and all of that, I completely agree with you guys that season eight should have been the finale. And so that's what deters me from wanting to watch any of the other seasons, even that led up to season eight in in their entirety, because now I feel like, well, this is a little unfulfilling because then I know that there's more content that comes after that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to want to finish it and see it through to the end to, you know, be able to properly judge it and have like a fair opinion on it. But I don't want to invest that much time into a show that I at least know two seasons I will feel are invaluable. I can tell you, I will save you the trip and make this easy for you. You can watch the series up to season eight, finish the finale, and then watch the last four or five episodes of of season 10, and you'll be just fine. You watch the first, the first season of the first episode of season nine, and then jump to the last four or five of 10, and you're fine. Or you're going to answer the question the right way. Yeah, or you I can was, talk about- I was getting there. I was getting there. You jumped you in. Stop. You stopped. First of all, John, stopped. are you still- you, you never stop. So we assumed you were done. <laughs> I was trying to take a breather. John is really still sassy and salty that he was last, and he, now he's taking it out on me as if I had a choice. Or don't don't feel like it's only you. Let's, let's get- <laughs> Is there an answer to the question? The actual yes! question asked? Yes! I'm sorry. God damn. So- <laughs> My my perspective on shows that flub their finale is if I've already been invested in the show, I'll maintain my continuation just to see how I actually feel about it. But when it comes to shows that I've had little to no investment in or it's been a really, really long time since I watched like the first season or whatever, then no, I'm not going to watch it. I have zero interest. Mm. For me, it's like, why put myself through all of that emotion where I know I'm going to end up at the end mad or frustrated or annoyed or whatever I may be feeling from the flubbed ending? If it was a, a truly bad ending, 
I, I agree with you. That would be how I felt if I thought Game of Thrones really flubbed it, but I think it works great, and I've rewatched that and still swims. Mm -hmm. Rewatched Fine. Lost, still felt the same way about that ending. Sorry, Troy. Hey, you know. But you, well, we agree on the character portion. The character Characters portion, great. we agree The on. character ending was great. It's and that's the, the only thing I cared about with Lost. I, every time I rewatch Lost, I go on a different journey because I'm wherever oh I am at, at my perfect, in my, wherever, wherever I am at in my point in life, I resonate with a different character every time I watch Lost. I never thought I would actually be on Ben's team in any way, shape, or form at any point in time. And the Until last you decided time, to take over the world and, you know. <laughs> Until the last time when I was finally kind of like down and a little depressed and whatever, a little John-like potentially. Aww. And then there was that one. <laughs> a little John-like. <laughs> That there was that one episode where, where Ben's I, Peach, literally... what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, clearly today it's just clearly. You know, very <laughs> obvious. But, but, like but you know, John, man. there's that one that one episode where Ben's literally in the woods. It's like, can I come with you because nobody will have me? And then Alana's like, you can come with me. And I was like, oh man, like I never felt for Ben in that moment like I did the last time I watched it. So good. Yeah, that's also not very realistic. That would never happen in real life. He'd be like, hey, I don't have anybody. Can, can, I, can I come with you? And she'd be like, fuck off. <laughs> That's what real life is. Yeah. And everybody in the island would drown. Like half the island would be drowning the other half of the island if they were like in a fight for their own survival and they had no rules. Like, oh, yeah. Every, every, yeah, yeah. every disagreement would not be settled with, let's just go talk this out. No. Oh, where'd, where'd, where'd Sawyer go? Oh, he's dead. Yeah. He's behind the rock. Sawyer would have been dead the first five minutes. I've been like, okay, you have got to go. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one follow up to this question also is that. If there's a show that I am interested in knowing what happens. So now you're happens, answering the question multiple times. Okay. I'm adding on to it. I'm, this is like an <laughs> appendix to it or something. We're supposed to have a discussion. We're discussing. No, this is the actual answer to the question because she just still hasn't actually I answered it I did answer it. I did. He even well, said, Aaron even said finish, he agreed with me. Finish. Finish. My God. My God. I was going to say. This is longer than the blacklist shit, what was. what was I going to say? <laughs> Don't even. That's so rude. <laughs> you guys are coming for me for no good reason. All right, Amanda, let's say this. What happens if <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer flubbed its ending? Oh, it there we go. It did. <laughs> no, it didn't. I wouldn't just I would disagree. I like the, the ending. It did. I like the ending. Let's of say Buffy. Buffy the Vampire Slayer flubbed its ending. Does it ruin things for you for vamp uh, for Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And go. It would change the way that I saw the show as an entirety. I'll give you an example, Dexter. I uh, good love that show, hated the ending, hated the ending. If I would have known the ending before I saw it, I probably wouldn't have finished it because I would have been like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever I've ever heard. Or what I would have done, which is what I was just going to say, is that if I'm interested in what a, where the story goes, just out of morbid curiosity and to hear what people are actually frustrated about, I'll learn about all of the major plot points that have occurred over the season and the finale and all of that. And I might watch like a big episode and then that's it. I did mm. that for The Walking Dead. So I knew most of what happened in The Walking Dead, but I watched the only time I watched like a full episode before this year, I watched like three or something like that out of mm. the first season. The rest was all just spoilers that I read or out talked to people about. Well, here, I'll give you some context. Um, the Blacklist ending made less sense than Dexter's. He runs into a hurricane. And ends up a lumberjack ending. I actually had Troy spoil it for me, so I know what happens, and it is it does seem very ridiculous. It was the blacklist is the dumb. reverse Dexter. <laughs> where they yeah. finished it, they finished it great and then made a dumb ending. <laughs> where yeah, Dexter actually, made a dumb ending and actually tried to save itself. It's a two hour um episode and three quarters of it are or almost all of it are really, really good. And then the last like three minutes are like, what the hell? What? No, yeah. what, the, what the actual fuck did you just do? I and, spent and, and, 10 years waiting for that. And there is there is literally something they could have just some simple tweaks oh, yeah, from yeah. what they actually yep. shot that would have actually made it really, really great. And they chose to go the other way. And unfortunately, that's that was a bad choice. Yeah. I can't wait to watch this episode just so I can visualize what Troy told me oh, and have yeah. all the context because it just sounds, it sounds, I'm hoping it doesn't look as stupid as it sounds. It's, it's, it's it looks utter, as stupid as it's it utter sounds. bullshit for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you don't have to visualize it's on the screen. That's, 
hearty har har. Jeez, John. John, you are kind of I'm going to stab you in the throat with one of your drones. You kind of are mean. All right, let's move on. So who are the directors left out there that can get butts in seats? Like, who who do you think still actually commands an audience? Nolan, Tarantino, Peel. I don't think Spielberg can do it anymore. De- Scorsese has to go to streaming. There's really... I can't think of any other, so I'm asking you guys. Like, who who do you think can put butts in seats? But the Scorsese movie is coming out in theaters, too. Yeah, it won't make any money in theaters. John? It's tough to say because, you know, everything post-pandemic has been really up in the air as far as who's willing to go to the movie theaters and go see things. So um, I think it's too soon to tell at the moment um, who can really get butts butts in seats. But I would say that the best chances these days, considering the, the, the turn a lot of people are taking in what they're seeing, are people like uh, Tarantino because everyone has this love and affection for, oh, he is just so real and so raw. And um, I think right now he might be the best choice. There's one director or at least one set of directors that I think still have it. Who's that? That you didn't mention. The Russo brothers. Mm, Maybe. They get butts in seats. They they haven't had a movie. They spend a lot of money, but they get butts in seats. Hang on, they get butts on streaming. They don't really get butts in seats anymore. They haven't had a movie hit theaters since I think I think the Avengers movies. I think Spirited was streaming. The Citadel show was streaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think all their stuff was streaming. So I don't know if they get butts. Like it's pretty easy to get a butt in the seat if you're already sitting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I guess that's fair. I don't know if he, I guess it depends on what you'd consider butts and seats. If it's like going out to a movie theater, going out to a movie theater, you know, a a, a blockbuster opening, or I just want consistency. And if I say consistency, Guillermo del Toro probably could be one that you could say would Mm. get butts and seats to a lesser extent, but yeah, smaller. Wes Anderson could, he has a small niche audience, so he could probably Mm -hmm. get a very small audience to go watch his weird ass movies. Um, Yeah, that's weird. It's wild. I feel like. Uh, no, 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 that's still pretty niche too. Who's that? Greta Gerwig. She's, I mean, she hasn't had Little she's Women. She's got stability in her viewership. She's got Lady Bird, Little Women, Barbie, I think seems like a big breakout for her. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Oppenheimer, you know, Chris Nolan, he, he's proven his name time and time again. If he can sell that yeah, freaking movie. Yeah, for sure. It's not a movie about- yeah. the, the, Three the hours! <laughs> He, Three those, hours. People will go see it. And I'm not yeah. gonna lie, I was trying to figure out how I could see it in um 35 millimeter. Really? You don't want to see it in 35 millimeter, you want to see it in 70 millimeter. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. 70 millimeter. Full but it's IMAX. not it's not anywhere the two, even in my state. Yeah, the two 70 millimeter theaters that we had in Illinois shut down. Well, she's <laughs> it went to the digital IMAX instead, which is just a just a damn well, crime. I don't I mean know if I need to see that movie in IMAX. I really I, it better be fantastic. It, the fact that it was shot in IMAX is what makes me yeah. interested in seeing it in if IMAX. You, if you because see, that's the way it was meant to be seen. If you go see Dunkirk and see it in 70 millimeter IMAX, the way that it was shot on those cameras, the scope of the movie just changes drastically. It's, it's, it's amazing to see it in that large format. I'm going to tell you a fact, and I'm not ashamed of it. I think I'd rather see Barbie on IMAX than Oppenheimer that weekend. Mm. And I'm not doing a double feature. That's way too long. I just think it's way, too, it's way too freaking long. But I will see both of them. Um, but Oppenheimer, yeah, it looks it's going to be great. Now it's going to be shot beautifully. Blah, 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 blah. Barbie, I just think it's going to be a crazy, visually stimulating, popping world. And mm-hmm. I kind of want to see that. On, a, on IMAX, I think great yeah. cast. I would say of the two of them, Barbie is probably going to be the more interesting one to watch, just For because sure. we need something. Like Oppenheimer, I, I get depressed just watching the trailers to that. I don't need a whole movie to put me <laughs> through that. So, uh, trailer the trailers for Barbie though, it's fun and exciting. I I, I kind of want to be Ken. So, Ryan yeah, Gosling singing about being a Ken. I mean, he's doing songs again. He's got a theater background, so that, that's fun. Uh, and I bought a Ken costume to wear to the premiere. That's there's like a moment where I'm too much information. I go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think that was it. I really hope you're wearing like a big uh, boa or something and sh- no shirt. Totally, just, just really taking a chance. Are you? Are you going? Never I'm mind. not going I'm not with. Do it. Absolutely not. Nope. 
Are you going sans pelvis? <laughs> I have to be sans a pelvis. If, if, you're going, if you're going as a cosplay, you got to be anatomically correct. Don't you you, gotta, you better tuck it. But actually, you got to be anatomically incorrect is more to the point. <laughs> exactly. Put the lotion in the basket. Exactly true. Put the bean in oh, I can just see Troy there. getting ready, and it's a scene from freaking Silence of the Lambs. Ooh. Dude. I literally Would just made know? that joke. You can't, like, just piggyback on my joke. Did you make that joke? Yes, if you would ever listen to anyone else He said, speak, put the lotion in the basket. My... So let's I mean, move he's on. Like, oh, he's, let's only move working on. on he's only working on Avatar, but James Cameron, I guess, still can do it. How are summer movies going for you? And and with the Hollywood <laughs> having a few costly flops like Indy and Flash, do you think it's time to admit that the budgets are way too high? Oh, for sure. I had a, tried to have a conversation. Tried to have a conversation with somebody about whether or not summer movies are dead because I don't get as excited, and I haven't been as excited about the summer movies this year as I thought I was going to be. Uh, Transformers, life got in the way. Flash, life got in the way. I don't even ha- know what happened uh, the I last three weeks. I don't think you're of- a fair barometer, man, because you've kind of been a little eeyore about movies for a little while, <laughs> a little bit. So I guess the question you're, you're the trying question to get is, back into the cycle. I think some are still yeah. doing well. The question is: Is did you want to go see them? Assuming nothing else got in the yeah. way, would you have gone to the theater to see these because they're that awesome? Did and you want to see them? To the theater? Did you want to go? Wanted to see them? Yes. You just don't see that as the priority right now. No, absolutely not. So does that mean summer box office is dead, or John just doesn't want to go to the summer movies right now? Do we? You know. You know, let me get comfortable here real quick. This is so what you do to Amanda. I'm just, I'm just doing, I'm just playing, you know, paying it forward. <laughs> I'm just going to, I'm just going to lean my chair back and then we can do this whole session. Are you going to take notes? Cause like, okay. So there was like this one time in my childhood where <laughs> I uh, was trying to get Halloween candy and my mom took it away and I was really upset and I really wanted to get Halloween. Is this the kind of shit you take a therapist? No, it's not. Well, I would quit. Like you got to bring something, man. Give me some real stories. It was actually his dad that took the Halloween candy away. No, it was really my mom. My mom really did take the Halloween candy away. You can have ten pieces a night, and I would only get ten pieces at all. Amanda, what do you what do you think about summer movies? So when it comes to our summer movies, I think part of it is yeah, like our budgets are too high for these movies. But I also kind of think what's playing into it is how much longer movies are than they used to be. Like we have consistently two and a half to three hour movies. And that's a huge commitment for people versus we used to be able to say we're in and out within two hours, including the trailers. That's not the case anymore. So you're talking about like half a work day devoted to going to the movies. To the movie. You don't work very long. (laughs) One movie. 25 minutes of trailers. Plus, I work 50 hours a week, but yeah, yeah 20, I know what you're saying. 25 minutes of trailers plus mm-hmm. the thank you for telling me how Dolby Atmos works and IMAX works, which I've seen a thousand times. Also, Nicole Kidman is yep. still present in the theater <laughs> two years later. People cheer like, for her, dude. It's it, hilarious. It's, we stand up. We're, we're like, I pledge allegiance to Nicole Kidman. <laughs> and can they just change the movies on the screen in this ad? That's I, all we want. <laughs> I think movies are the same length that they that they have been for a while. Um, if anything that hurts it, I think it's just the exhausting amount of television shows that are out there that people can watch at home. There's I just... think that's a factor to it too. I do think movies are consistently lengthier than they used to be, though. Yeah, hour fifty to ten. That's a good sweet spot. Yeah, I think a movie should be exactly as long as it needs to be. And most of them, almost every single movie we watch, do we not all agree? Is like, yeah, if we lost 15 to 20 minutes, it would have been great. No. Pacing was good, but it was a little too long. It depends on the movie. I mean, I, in the, seen... at the movie theaters, movies that are going to the movie theaters specifically, because you complain about that a lot, too. So um, Aaron used I, to make I, fun I, of me when I said that. I do not say movies are 20 minutes too long. long. I do not say well, that. Y- OK, Troy, you don't to write this off because it. you I sit there it. and watch movies at two and a half times or one and a half speed or whatever it is you watch shit. He can't in. do so, that at the theater, though. I can't do that at the theater. <laughs> right. No, I'm saying that he does it at home. So he has no right to complain when he goes to the theater and he has no control over it. I can't do it at home either unless I watch it on Netflix on my phone. But Netflix on my phone is the only way I can get the 2x speed on any kind of media. Why would you want to? 
It's so weird. It's, a, it's, it's, some, it's not how that's not how it works. I've I literally done it. It, it does quick? sound faster. It absolutely sounds like chipmunks. It does. It does. Maybe sound it does like it in you your brain it. because you're computing at a different speed than mine. But I can freaking <laughs> tell you, the chipmunks are there. What's the what's the rate on computers like megahertz or something like that? Is that the processing speed? You start the movie, you wait for about 10 minutes. Once you get the cadence of speech from everybody, you go, okay, this needs to go quicker. And you just speed it up. Oh, and it Jesus. sounds like it did before. I, I can't take you seriously. Same thing right with now. audiobooks. No, no. Same. I've I've done it. None of that sounds enjoyable. I'd so much rather go to a movie theater. And I do not say that movies are 20 minutes too long. I mean, I, I some can be cut. They can be tightened up. That usually happens, sure. But 20 minutes, is that's a long time. I say it needs to be 20 minutes shorter and yes. Aaron yells at me for saying it's been 20 minutes too shorter but yeah you say that with everything say it, these, everything needs to be 20 everything minutes should too be short. 20 minutes shorter That's could ridiculous. be anything could be tightened up it's ridiculous ridiculous There's lots of movies that are exactly as long as they need to be titanic is exactly as long as it needs to be right three in, hours plus and then you exactly got the, in, as long as and then you got the director's cut and then you got the re-release version and then you got the in blu-ray and laser disc <laughs> in small quantities la- movies that lengthy are fine but like, even Everything when we think about how many movies just this year have been released over that two hour mark, it's ridiculous. Like when we count big blockbuster type movies, I should say, which are primarily the ones that are going to bring people to the movie theater. It's not going to be the independent films, unfortunately. And so the ones that have the budget to make longer movies are the ones that are drawing people out. And those ones tend to more often than not anymore be longer than two hours. And I think it just has to do with they bank too much on nostalgia for the first half of the summer. And also Titanic never had a director's cut. The movie was the director's cut. All I'm saying is that Gone with (laughs) the Wind was three hours and it had a freaking intermission. Gone with the Wind was four hours. Well, fine. Whatever. Anything that's over three hours with the trailers needs an intermission because I got to pee if you want me to buy your snacks. You can't handle one time speed. It's not fair. You can't handle one time speed. You were not because the target I demographic. Pee. I need to go faster so I can get to the bathroom. That's not why. It's because you just want everything done. I'm just, I just <laughs> want to be done. <laughs> impatient. Just, yeah, yeah, you're done. impatient. Go to the next thing. Go to the enjoy, next thing. Enjoy. Thing. Enjoy. Enjoy. Savor. I can't enjoy Savor. it when my kidneys are falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> you're so dramatic. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on to our spoiler preview of Cobweb, which hits theaters on July 21st. Eight-year-old Peter is an imaginative fella and quite odd. When he begins to hear knocking and scratching on his wall, he begins to panic. But his parents believe it's just his imagination. There was a little girl who disappeared from his neighborhood many years earlier, so they keep Peter very secluded. When Peter's substitute teacher comes to believe that Peter might be telling the truth, the secrets of Peter's home life finally come to light. The film was written by Chris Thomas Devlin and was directed by Samuel Bowden and stars Lizzie Kaplan, Anthony Starr, and Cleopatra Coleman and hits theaters July 21st. This is different, Aaron, because we're talked about nostalgia, blockbusters, popcorn movies. Why the hell are we getting a horror movie in the summer? Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. It actually takes place like building up to Halloween too. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm glad we got it. it I, and I enjoyed it. It's, it's a lot different than a lot of mainstream horror these days. It, it's got a slow build, but it pays off. So is it gore? Is it paranormal? Like what's, cause we're doing summer horror. Is it a different complete thing to itself or does it just pull from all the tropes? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of, it's really its own thing. I mean, it's very, very interesting how it goes. It has a lot of, um, it feels very, it starts off feeling very paranormal, right? It almost feels like there's something supernatural going on. We don't know really what's going on. And it's kind of a, a slow build to the payoff, which the gore amplifies as it goes and really the intensity amplifies as it goes. I mean, at one point it even kind of almost feels a little bit like malignant in that respect to where the movie kind of changes course and you're like whoa what's happening it's got a cool twist very interesting dynamics the the gore and the intensity is there uh lizzie kaplan and anthony star anthony star you know homelander is very homelander here i mean i loved him in banshee i i love him as homelander i i love him here he's he plays peter's dad and 
uh, Lizzie Kaplan is Peter's mom. And, you know, they obviously are trying to shelter their son for specific reasons that you learn as the movie goes on. And there are plenty of surprises that are shocking, but not really jump scare shocking, just shocking and how it pl- plays out. Really interesting, feel- like really interesting plot. Like I, I, it really starts the first 20 minutes. I had a hard time getting into, I mean, I was into it, but I wasn't into it. And then a couple things happen and I'm, then I was in it. And then the end goes bonkers. I mean, is it ominous? Is it like, yes. do you feel a sense yeah. of dread the entire time? Or is it just like, you know, oh, these, these parents are just, you know, helicopter parents and are coddling their kid. Seriously, like the first half hour, you have no idea what's going on. You're trying to figure it out. It's played very, very close to the vest. You have, they give you like, they spoon feed you some specific details that kind of lead you wondering what is going on. Did the parents do something to, like at some point? Um, they keep mentioning a girl that had been missing in the neighborhood. The substitute teacher is trying to find out exactly what's going on with this little boy. And Peter ends up getting more and more neurotic as he goes. And you wonder how much of this could be his imagination. Like what is really happening here? And then about that, about the half hour mark is when it starts to kind of reveal the layers are starting to get peeled because they've set the foundation and you know, You've got a very intense performance from Anthony Starr. Lizzie Kaplan is a very manic performance. And those kind of things combine so that you are not quite sure which, like how deep does their understanding of what's going on go? Or are they actually just worried about Peter? And and that's why I think the movie works is because you're not quite sure where it's going for a very long period of time. And then once you figure it out, you're in. You're either in or you're out. Because like, it's and that's why I re- reference uh, *Malignant* because that's a movie where once you get to the flip, if if you're not in, you're not in, and if you are in, you are all the way in. Did you like the spoon fitting in the start of it though, or would you, is it like yes. a, it tells me versus yeah. shows me kind of thing? I I like a slow burn. I know a lot of people don't like it. Troy, you being one of them, some people just need everything to go at ten times speed. This is not one of those movies. It's definitely taking its time trying to get you and invested and involved and i really like how they did it here because it does the first half is completely different than the last half does the name of the movie make sense for what the movie is absolutely yeah but you won't know it until the end of the movie it pay, nice. like it's it's a it's a direct reference to the movie sweet well if ten dollars a full price of admission what are you getting cobweb uh, i give it seven bucks it's really new innovative Ooh. creative I definitely, uh, very haunting score. I, I really recommend people see this in the theater. This is a new director that I'm uh, new to me anyway, Samuel Bowden, and I definitely will see whatever he does next. Highly recommend Right on. Yep. Okay, guys, we need to talk about something very serious, and that is something that my fellow Scream fanatics, I think, will be equally excited about. You can bring home Scream 6 on 4K UHD disc now, today. Ghostface is back and more terrifying than ever on a rampage in the Big Apple. Melissa Barrera, Jenna Ortega, and Courtney Cox star in the sensational slasher hit Scream 6. It's directed by Matt Bedinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette. You get over an hour of killer bonus content when you buy on 4K UHD disc. It is available at participating retailers, so go to your favorite store, go online, figure out where you're going to buy that from. Just be where it's rated R, so maybe not with your kids around, unless you're an awesome parent. Scream 6 is from Paramount Pictures. It is a phenomenal film. I enjoyed it so much. Really great tribute to the Scream franchise as a whole. I know our group really liked it, so go check it out if you haven't seen it. And if you have and you loved it, go buy it now. All right, let's go to our From the Outside In topic. Toys, toys, the new movies. You got Barbie hitting theaters. Apparently, it's going to blow up the box office. That's that's awesome news. Transformers is reignited. There's a new Masters of the Universe in the waiting in the wings. GI Joe might be coming back. We don't like. They're just all of these toys are hitting our movie screens again, and apparently they're they're lighting the theaters up. So I'm wondering when we're going to get first the MCU, the Mattel Cinematic Universe, because that's going to happen. <laughs> but let's let's talk about toys. Did you guys have a lot of fun 
playing with toys growing up or still do? It's something that I, I loved as a kid. And um, I don't really play to with toys as an adult or even uh, when I was a teenager, I guess. I, I really wanted to until I got to the point where I'm like, I'm looking around at the other teenagers and I'm going, uh, maybe I should put this stuff away. But I did love my toys and I did love the adventures that I would take myself through. Uh, I remember having uh, Sky Commanders and I thought my Sky Commander toys were great. F Mask was my favorite thing that I used to play with. Uh, Transformers was my other favorite thing that I used to play with. Which one was Mask? I had a lot hang, of favorite hang, things. Hang on, slow down. Which one was Mask? Mask oh, was the uh, he, loses, he, loses his, he loses his 80s card now. Mask no, I awesome. remember mask. I'm saying I don't remember what it meant because I know that they were initials and I can't remember what they stood uh, for. More mobile armored strike, strike command. command. Okay, got it. Yeah, and the K is, is what mask command. Right, because we K couldn't spell command. in the 80s. That was a big thing. Right, right. That's why I spell the way I do because the 80s said it's okay to just make things up. And, so, so and it also can work. that knowing is half the battle. So there's irony. Yo, Joe. Right, but that was GI Joe. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, like, knowing is half the battle, and then we, it's okay right. to misspell shit. But, yeah, I mean, the, the answer to your question, I loved my toys. Troy, you still play with toys, right? Yeah, Lego. I was going to say, like, uh, my toys are just much more expensive now. So, like, I have my R2-D2, my BB-8, my lightsaber, and my Kyber crystals. I got my Legos all over that I now add light kits to, which is amazing. So, yeah. I, I really hope I'll, you have sex at some point in your life. I, I think because I have light up Lego sets, I get more sex than I would have gotten without light up Legos. So just saying. <laughs> it's a big turn on. People come up and they're like, hey, let me see your Legos. Nope, nobody's <laughs> ever said that. <laughs> oh, Lord. I remember playing with a various different toys, but I think my problem was always still my problem which is that I got bored very easily with something. So I would like pick up a toy and I'd have fun with it for a little bit and then I'd get bored and I'd play, I'd want to play with a different one or, you know, I'd see what were those like late night commercials for all those ridiculous toys that you could buy where you'd pay in like, you know, four easy installments of nineteen ninety nine, like all of those toys. I, just, I wanted those. What were those? All I remember uh, like cassette tape compilations or not those are, those are CD compilations. Yeah, that's what I was going to go with. Like that's <laughs> No, they had like in the 90s and the early 2000s, they had Cin those like Cinemax? marker toys and different things like that. Like Spirograph? Was... No. But also, I think my favorite toy that you're trying I, to sidestep, but we're still trying to pin down what these I toys were. I told you, were. they had like different markers and stuff like that, where you'd have like the whole rainbow of colors with mm -hmm. one with one strip. You know what? Ask anybody who's younger than you, old no, shit, and they're going to remember about. these. Yeah, no, I remember what you're, which one you're talking that about. That is fair. You know, she's, you, she's younger. So she you, probably remember they're, or they're, they're the color change markers where you can put down one line mm -hmm. and then you can do this whole other, this whole run it over with a different marker yep. and it, it'll change the color or change the mm -hmm. opacity or and something. That was like yeah, four installments at 20 bucks? Dude, it was insane. That's but like, I wanted all of them. God. They knew how to sell to me, man. But like Beanie That's Babies, expensive. Tamagotchis, Furbies. Um, Tamagotchi, my, that was the, the where you had to feed the, the, the digital pet, pet or something, right? Yeah. That was Hell so yeah. stupid. Those are weird. It taught you how to take care of an animal Did it? if you were good at Did it. It was the Fitbit before the Fitbit. No, That's it was true. it was it was the pre-programming of social media to basically say push yeah. this button every now and then just to make sure it's still alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My favorite one though, because I did play with like Barbies and just stuff. Just like that you was take mostly... care of a dog, just push the button to make sure it's alive. <laughs> that was mostly so I could try to still fit in and everything. Which one, the Barbie? Barbies and stuff. Yeah, I liked them when I could, you know, make them naked and stuff, but. Other than that, I think I got kind of bored with them because I didn't have Hang great on. imagination. Let's dive in. So um, <laughs> we made the barbers <laughs> naked so we could buy our twenty dollar. Don't worry, the, the men toy. were naked too. Ken was naked also. Oh, yeah. the GI I, Joes I see, I see were also going. naked. You're just rug you know, burning the shit out of them, huh? <laughs> just having having a Barbie orgy, you know, <laughs> just what you do when you're seven and you're hanging out with friends. Okay, no honest. joke. This is an actual activity that happened with me and a couple friends. Anyway, honest question um, though, before you move on, because you brought okay. up Barbie, and obviously mm -hmm. I don't have as much experience with Barbie as John probably does. Or do you? <laughs> <laughs> but here's my question, Amanda, to you. Um, mm -hmm. So the Barbie movie's coming out, you know, mm -hmm. or is out probably by the time people listen to this. I don't. What What else is the appeal except attractive dolls? Like you know, okay. Dolls. 
I would love to answer this question for you. So there is actually a history of Barbie that I think a lot of people don't fully understand. They see her as just this bimbo slut. And I was actually reading like some I don't Twitter think she threads was on easy. this recently. <laughs> But like that's the image is like people really equate, you know, pretty women with, I, I don't know, loose decisions, I guess is what I'll say. Well, like I would um, say more vapid, like dumb yeah, blondes, that too, the dumb that too. You know, the, but when you look at Barbie as like a character, you know, as a toy and as an individual, she maintained a monogamous relationship with Ken. She had all of these different businesses and like hustles. And she was supposed to be this very, like, innovative character. So, like, if you look at her from that perspective, she was cool because she was always involved in something different. She was always – there was always just something else for Barbie. It wasn't just Barbie sitting in a dollhouse. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, there was more – there was more variation to her, and they created a a personality and a life for her and for Ken. And and I think when people look at it through that lens – and not through the lens of blonde, pretty character is a bimbo um, and is dumb and doesn't know anything. Like, that's just the stereotype that's been perpetuated. But that doesn't, that's not the reality of what that toy and what that character was. Oh, and plus, so, she so, had her own dream house and she didn't have to marry Ken and just take his house. So, right. props to Barbie. She, you know, and she her, did it right. She was a girl boss. That's right. Yeah. She was a girl boss. Yeah. Nice. So, I think that's a cool. Part. My favorite toy, though. Um, and it's I literally still have that one in my house somewhere, I think, because I brought it with me. Um, it's moved into like storage and all that good stuff is my easy bake oven. Hmm. And it works. I, I wouldn't ever. Yeah, hell yeah, it worked. My dad got so mad at me wanting to cook shit all the time because it was, you know, that's a messy activity for like an eight year old to be doing all the time. But I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to make brownies and I'm going to make cookies. And it's like, maybe you should indulge in those sweet treats I'm making for you instead of judging them. But also, did I get radiation poisoning? Because I don't think I trust this <laughs> this microwave oven that I got. Um, those, and also the packets were dangerous. questionable. Yeah, so Those things are dangerous. <laughs> But that was my favorite one, like of all time, of all the toys that I've had. But I've also been a big fan of like stuffed animal toys. Like I still collect stuffed animals to some extent, like of cool characters I like. Could they make an easy bake oven movie? I don't know how you. I thought about that earlier. I was like, what could you do with that? And the only thing I came to terms with is if they made (laughs) the bear (laughs) spinoff is if they made some like (laughs) tiny short film or something about the easy bake oven catching on fire in the house and then uh tickle me elmo is screaming in the fire like that meme (laughs) (laughs) that's the only thing i could think of all right fair enough (laughs) that's all i got oh that's that's funny uh i'm trying to remember i think i i did uh, i had all the star wars toys i had the ewok village sets i don't know if you guys remember those ewok village set was badass yeah it was pretty cool even had the little 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 net to capture your people and java sail barge was awesome i thought you were poor how did you get this this little set Uh, mowing lawns kid mowing lawns yeah stealing thieving no working unlike your generation yeah i've been working since i was 16 and babysitting and stuff since i was like 12 maybe it's the next generation whichever one's the lazy one yeah the problem is you started working at 16 you're supposed to start working at 12 i just said that i was babysitting and stuff i dealt with i I I dealt with a child who when i was babysitting at like 12 or 13 years old pulled his pants down and chased me around the house with his penis out so don't ever say that i didn't work hard because i had to deal with that shit I'm gonna... I dealt with a hundred children. They're called customers. <laughs> Every morning, but all of them kept their pants on and didn't traumatize Not you. Not necessarily, because some people would actually come to the door <laughs> in their bathrobe to get their paper at five in the morning. What is happening? We're talking about innocent child toys. I've gone out into my driveway to get the newspaper in my underwear. So. And I wear thongs. Why do people TMI, why do people do this? I don't understand. And because you know what? This is the comfort of my home. I pay a lot of money to be here. I am not putting on pants unless I have to. Or there's out, children the, around. The outside is not your home, though. It's still my property. I'm still <laughs> on my property. I'm in the driveway. I'm not on the sidewalk. You know. Okay. Anyway, can we move back to Ewok <laughs> Village sets? Because I don't know how we got here. 
That's what I was trying to do. It's a nudity. Yeah. Because you said how you paid for it. We were just saying, yep, we all had jobs too that paid for yeah, our stuff. Yeah, you mowed lawns, man. You did you did odd yeah. jobs. You you worked. That's just what you did. As a, and you could do that as a kid and, and your parents Apparently, Amanda was charging people to go out to her lawn and pick up her newspaper. <laughs> what? No, I do that for free naked. <laughs> right. <laughs> Other people were paying Come her to be do my that neighbor. for their Yeah, right? Come be my neighbor and pay me for that. What's more important <laughs> is who still gets a fucking newspaper. <laughs> exactly. I actually, I got, I, I got got Jesus at the Christ. store, at the grocery store. The one time I went to the grocery store this year, I got got into supporting local journalism. So now I have a fucking newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> I would never read it. Wait, can we back up? What do you mean the one time you've gone to the grocery store? Since COVID happened, honey, I've barely been to the grocery store. I have deliver. Kroger delivery they deliver now. and Instacart. Mm-hmm. You know it. Instacart Amen. So Hallelujah. Expensive. Praise the Lord. Oh man, they're they're actually pretty affordable these days. Yeah, they had Kroger? To be, yeah. They they had to bring their prices down in order to stay competitive because everybody yeah. started doing their own delivery services directly. Yeah. Kroger will let me maintain the in-store prices and even clip coupons and then still have it delivered through Instacart through their membership. Nice. Can we go back to toys? That's kind of what we were talking about. Yeah. Sorry. The point of that. Yeah. Uh, So Transformers, G.I. Joe, Spider-Man, Thundercats. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Um, All all those. Silverhawks. Gobots. I don't know Silverhawks. I don't know Silverhawks. I don't Gobots. You don't know Silverhawks? No. What's that? Okay. Is that like so, a Panam- Panamanian thing? No, it's very much an American thing. Silverhawks came out just after uh, the Thundercats because the same company who made Sil- uh, Thundercats made Silverhawks. And their thinking was, we made so much money off of saying, let's take an animal and throw them in the people and make it a fantasy. They said, okay, let's do the same thing, but make it a sci-fi adventure instead. And that's how we got Silverhawks. 65 episodes in one season. Jesus. But were there toys? Yes, there yeah. were toys. That's the only reason you made cartoons in 1986 was to sell toys. Yeah, I'm looking at these That's toys now and they look um, weird. They are weird. It was a very weird, weird show. No, they look really, really weird. Like I wouldn't play with these because they look creepy. Uh, That's probably why I didn't play with them because I, I only like cool shit. And as it releases this podcast, they're actually trying to make a Silverhawks live action movie that failed. Well, no, who's going to go see it? I've never even, I don't even know this. And a guy looks like a freaky angel, like a freaky blue angel and just like not even blue, blue, gray. What a weird color scheme. It's space. Maybe it's silver. No, the one I'm looking at is like blue, gray. And then they do have silver. Sure. And, um, you know, and they all have cool names like Quicksilver, Clever. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, I'm glad I missed this one. What? You're a monster. I'm just, you know. And then the other toys were like Silly Putty. I play with Silly Putty all the time. Slinky. Slinky is my favorite a, toy of all time. I think they can make an entire, if they're, if J.J. Abrams can make a movie about Hot Wheels cars, somebody can make a movie about Slinky. You know, I still, to this day, every day, I play with, with a Slinky. Every day. And John, don't say anything creepy. I play with this thingy every single day. It's like my my de stressor. Yeah, when I'm ADH, on conference your calls, ADHD yep, fidget, absolutely. fidget thing. All the time. I, I can't tell you how many people have been like, what's that noise? Like, oh, I'm playing with my slinky. And I'm sure it doesn't sound right on the other end of that. That call. sounds like the dirtiest thing I've ever heard in my life. But thankfully, I'm they, just playing with my slinky. Recognize the noise. What's that noise? I'm just playing with my they slinky. They recognize the noise. Are they asking you the question because you're not actually playing with a metal one and it's a plastic one and they're like, why it's is a, that it, plastic? It's a plastic one, yeah. Oh, then that's not, a slink, that's not a slinky then. I beg the difference. It goes downstairs, the owner is, and pairs, it plays still with works. Slinky, A slinky is only a metal one. No, they actually make plastic slinkies now. It fits on your back. It's great for a snack. It's log, log, log. It's log, log. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. That's not how that's the song goes. That's not how that song goes. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's you changed the lyrics said, mid-song. All right, so do they make good movies? That's the other question. And I would say, John, do you think they make good movies? Uh, you know, if they're done the proper way, just like anything else, you can always make a good movie out of it. I, you know, I'm thinking back to the battle, the Battleship movie. Like they turned a board game uh, and made a movie that almost relates absolutely in no way to the board game. 
uh, into an, a fun, enjoyable movie. And yeah, I mean, it, it's possible. It depends on who's in the who's in the cast, who's the, who's behind the scenes as far as a director is concerned. Yeah, and that one's it depends super, on who's, super dumb and it's still enjoyable. Yeah, it was super dumb. The The Lego movie that was that that movie as much as he has an earworm song in it it was a great concept for a fun movie about legos and you know what it's it's awesome so yeah it's possible depending on who the creative team uh is behind it to make a good movie with toys and dungeons and dragons that just came out and i thought that was very good even if it didn't make the money i would hope it would yeah i i mean i'm broken hearted over that one but yes that one it made enough no, it didn't. Not, not enough, with that budget. Not enough for a sequel. Not with a budget, no. Yeah, not enough for a sequel, sadly. Oh, bother. Um, oh, bother. So do you still get excited about these nostalgia grabs? I mean, Barbie, I would say remove Barbie from that because Barbie's kind of, uh, I don't know, caught uh, zeitgeist by the tail. Normally that doesn't happen, but do you still get excited when they make stuff like this and they're bringing back your toys from your childhood if they made a... Silver Hawks or a Magic Marker movie? Would you get excited about it? <laughs> magic Marker. <laughs> uh, you know, I think it just depends on how they're going to implement the concept. Kind of similar to what John was saying. You know, you can, if you're a good enough screenwriter and you have a good enough vision as a director and you have a great cast, you could probably make any idea fun. Um, even if it's not serious and it's more satirical kind of comedy, you can still do something that's good with it. However, am I necessarily drawn to those nostalgia grabs? Not really. Um, I'm interested in them. Like, I'll use Barbie for an example just because it is recent. I just want to use that as like a reference point. Would I say that I'm excited about Barbie because it's Barbie? Probably not. But am I excited because of the cast tying in with Barbie? Yeah, I, I'm curious to see how it goes. And it is something from my childhood. So I'm curious to see, mostly just curious, to see what they're going to do with that story. Mm-hmm. But I, I you know, think it just depends on the type of toy you're looking at. You know, I'm uh, I'm going to take this a little bit further and say that it's not necessarily about the nostalgia grab as much as it is about taking stories of these of these stories like we were all playing with different toys at one point or another and then you have um you have suddenly that toy being up on the big screen being visualized in ways that you had hoped and dreamed of when you were a kid and all of a sudden it starts becoming more and more of a real thing and as kids we're all creating our own little stories we're all our own little directors with these toys moving them around and creating voices for them and having uh, falling into this world of imagination and now all of a sudden we are seeing what is possible for somebody else to take this and and run with it and sometimes it comes out to a, a good result uh bumblebee is a good good result um ninja turtles that's another one though that was a cartoon and a comic book first the toys are also a big deal when it came to selling mm-hmm. that whole project sure. project um the the on the negative side the bay verse transformers movies not necessarily a great great result because there was no paying attention to any sort of storytelling. There's no the first a one lot of was that good, was, man. The first one was really good. I, thought. I the it first was one okay. was the first one. It was it was okay. It was good. Uh, I'll say I'll say it was good because it did get me excited and I did enjoy it for what it was. But then it kind of went down this this long path of like nothing here makes sense. Uh, but when we switch it over to Bumblebee, Bumblebee had a lot of reverence for the original story. A lot of uh, the original. Um, uh, designs, uh, bringing those real designs into a story that's kind of like E.T. meets the Transformers. That was a great idea. Uh, that's what makes me excited for Transformers, the the, uh, the the Rise of the Beast. You know, there's a lot of um, if you're telling a good story and you're using these IPs to tell these good stories, I'm, I don't think it's much, so much nostalgia as it is to there's just the enjoyment of seeing your childhood up on the screen. Okay. Maybe that's just nostalgia. My bad. <laughs> Shit. I mean, technically, yeah, the whole thing was kind of about nostalgia. Yeah. Uh, so what toys would make great films that we haven't really seen yet? I do we need to, ha- do we need to have this conversation again? Thundercats. Oh, make Thundercats. 
please. I think this would be amazing. Thundercats and Mask are the two most overlooked 1980s yes. properties. Yes. Because the whole reason that you're making these movies today is like John was saying, it's the nostalgia factor. I want to go see this because I play with this as a kid. And I want to bring my kids to the movie theater because we can keep Thundercat conversations going. It's why um, Avatar The Last Airbender works so well because it's in a vein of a story that I can understand and get behind with the four elements that I can watch with my kids. And then now they're making the live action Avatar The Last Airbender on Netflix uh, when they brought back Voltron on Netflix. And it paid homage to the original 1984 Voltron. Oh, that was so great. It was so good. And then my kids got into Voltron because of it. So then we bought the, Vol- the Voltron Lego set and it disassembles into the five lions. It's a, it, the whole purpose of this was to sell shit. And believe me, if you bring back the right nostalgia at the right time for the right families, you will sell tons of shit. And do you think Thundercats could really work though? Like live action or animation? What are you thinking? I think live action would work great, especially with where be. we are now. Would they look like the cats from the movie Cats? No, they no. wouldn't. Because they, even in the cartoon, they didn't look like those cats. They looked like they were humans with d- distant shave. Humanoids that didn't shave. Humanoids <laughs> of scruffy humans. Okay. All right. We just cast a bunch of Hugh Jackmans. I, I think you can really do something cool with it. I'm, it. It definitely is ripe for... I love that cartoon. I mean, I, I love that cartoon. You know, uh, like I said, Thundercats was was people slash animals uh, kind of in the in a, in, the, in a world of of fantasy, and we're in a, a a revival at the moment of sword and sorcery kind of story as being a, bi- a big deal. So if we are in a moment where we can do this sort of thing, uh, be- thanks to Game of Thrones, thanks to uh, whatever other thing that I can't think of at the moment because of what time of the night it is. Mm -hmm. It is possible to make something Thundercats. Is it going to be easy? Absolutely not. Uh, But could it be good? Sure. I I would love... Especially if you can do Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts is very along the lines of Thundercats, just mechanical instead of humanoid. I would love to see a Teddy Ruxpin horror movie. Like, Wasn't the food horror movie enough? No, but... No, because that looks like an awful, crappy movie. I was just capitalizing on the name. What I mean, like, Ted, put some real Ted, work Ted into it. Ted didn't cover that for us? Ted 1 and Ted 2? No. I, look, can I finish? <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin is very much uh, like a really kind of bad 80s thing that still exists. His eyes moved, and he, I think he talked. I can't remember exactly everything he did. But he was just creepy as shit, even as a kid. That, to me, would make a great horror movie, because I love movies where... You have things like Megan, or you have things like Child's Play, where Chucky is a do- like just murderous dolls always get me. And I think if you threw that in and tied it in with nostalgia, that could be fun. Like that could that could legitimately be fun. Well, especially because you could eject the Teddy Ruxpin cassette tape out of Teddy Ruxpin and then go put it in a recorder and record whatever you wanted Teddy Ruxpin to say and then put it back into Teddy Ruxpin. Sure, you can use the doll to murder other people. Yeah. Over oh, whatever, or make Cabbage Patch Kids make them be murderers. I don't care. Like I just I like the idea of a horror movie using some things from my childhood. I had the exact same thought, but mine was with. Uh, sorry to go back to it because I mentioned it earlier. Easy bake oven. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, but if it set people on fire and was like a cremator, that'd be kind of cool too. Mm. Um, but I'm going it's back a cremation to Elmo. oven. <laughs> it's a cremation oven. <laughs> sorry, Elmo. Elmo, yeah. Like I, I think that that would be kind of haunting because everyone always was a little weird when you did get Elmo to make its noise and it was like ah! or whatever it sounded well, like. Well yeah because like, it was freaky as shit like here come tickle it was. me. It was just like yeah. what the fuck is tickle, what tickle is me, this? Tickle me. What a weird doll. So I love the idea of turning that transforming that into like a horror movie even if like he is the same thing as Chucky I don't even care if it's a, a replica a stolen idea from that where he becomes a murderer but i just love the idea of elmo becoming a frightening real life character okay so we're not doing an episode of remake this movie right but go with me on this for a minute because i just Mm. had a brilliant idea did you shrek right dreamworks did all the fairy tales and brought all the fairy Mm -hmm. tales characters together why not a story like that where it brings all of like the 1980s 
movies together in some kind of universe. You mean toys? Like, like toys. Yeah, it's like toy horror story, though. Like Speak and Spell, oh. Pound Puppies, all that shit. Viewmasters totally. are popping up for no reason. Yeah. Somebody's Air Bears are rabid. doing stuff. Some maniac is carving away on an Etch-A-Sketch in the corner. All the Beanie Babies come to life, oh, and then they start like terrorizing the families. I watched the them on the it. shelf for a year and a half of it. or yeah, t- yeah. 10 years. Yeah, I'm in. I would watch it. I would watch it. Everybody's playing Trivia Pursuit because that's what you did back then. Thought you were smart. Weren't. No, you get like He Man teams up with Lion O, and then they like throw Trivia Pursuit discs <laughs> as like weapons, but then they like come out in all six pieces, like break out and become six independent discs. Or darts that fly at you. No, no, you're 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 right back to overthinking it mode. Good job. I'm just I'm throwing the ideas out there. Someone's listening. <laughs> All right. Well, we're gonna move on to uh, what's this movie? We haven't done this in a long, long time. And also, you can always find our uh, information at thehollywoodoutsider.com. But uh, we're gonna do a variation on an old game. We used to do this where we would actually play a clip, but instead of playing a clip, we're just gonna have people deliver their line, and we're gonna see if we can guess what the movie is. We each get one. So Troy first, and we're um, trying to pick a known line from any movie based on a toy or game. And uh, we'll see if the rest of the host can guess it. And you know, game is like board game, not Nintendo. Okay. <clears throat> this is a conversation between two characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, Valerie says after she finds a hamburger wrapper empty that she was going to eat, says, mm-hmm. Allie, you ate my burger. And Allie says, Oh yeah, prove it. And Valerie says, I can't because you ate the evidence. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm stumped. You stumped the hoe. <laughs> John's going to get it. John knows. He's thinking. Garbage Pail Kids? Garbage Pail Kids is correct. Oh. Valerie Vomit and Allie Gator. Wow. Good work. Well done, guys. John. Okay. I can't believe I got that right. Me either. Okay, so mine's going to be a little easier. You ready? Ready. If this relationship is going to work out between us, I need to feel free to party with a bunch of strangers whenever I feel like it. I will text you. Is this the Lego Batman? Lego Batman. Yeah. Lego Two. Batman. Nope. It's just Lego movie. Oh, whatever. But it's <laughs> oh, Batman right. oh, it's in different. Lego movie. That's it's different. different. That's different true. Movie. Cause there is a separate movie. You're fair. You're fair. You're right. Ha, 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 ha. Ding. First try. <laughs> Only work in black and sometimes very, very dark gray. Uh, I still think the best is when it's in Lego Batman, though, when he's standing in front of the microwave and he's just like, (laughs) he's doing whatever he's dancing and he's got like no pants on. (laughs) That's just went creepy. Amanda. All right. So we'll see. We'll see how this one goes. Mm, mm. You're a child's plaything. Toy Toy Story. Story. Mm -hmm. Too easy. Toy Story. It was easy. I didn't know how easy he said known. The other one I had. Okay, let's see if it you guys can get this known. one. Yeah. Okay. Stop giving me things that come apart. Toy Story 2? No. <laughs> it's a different movie. <laughs> Toy Story 3? It's based on a game. S- say that again. Stop trap? giving me things that come apart. Is there a mousetrap movie? No. I don't think so. Uh, I don't know. Jumanji. Jumanji. Um, oh, okay. All right. Okay, good one. Good one. Yeah, that almost cheats because it's not a real game, but I, I'll let it slide. It is a real game now. It is a real game. You can buy it, it now. Is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I now. own it. All right. Suck it. All right, John. Suck it. <laughs> <sighs> That's not a battleship. It's a museum piece. Is that battleship? It's battleship. Did you even really try? <laughs> like, I I couldn't figure. I couldn't think of anything no, that I wanted to go bullshit. with. Bullshit! It takes eight seconds to go to IMDb and look up any movie and look for quotes. Don't yeah, don't give me that. I couldn't any, think of a single I, thing. Would uh, Godzilla count? There's toys for Godzilla. Yeah. No, it doesn't count. Well, yeah. Sort of those movies first. <laughs> I don't think it says rar. Is that yeah. even count? Uh, I'm just gonna pick the one line that is the. Fucking movie title in that line, huh? I hope they can get it. <laughs> Jeez. You're going to Top Gun. What? I think it's Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> and scene. All right. That's it for this episode. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening. Remember, the uh, next time you head to a theater or stream comfortably on your couch, buy popcorn, have fun. 
at Barbie Heimer or whatever. I hope uh, I hope that both movies are as successful as people keep saying they're going to be. That'll be awesome for. Fox and if you Fox. see both in the same day, let us know. Yes, I want to. I want to know people that actually went That's and saw five hours of movies. And if you if you Just see the them in the wrong part. order, you're going to feel like John X. <laughs> So you kind of, you got to, and I don't, you can take that any way you want, John, because it could, I could be thinking Oppenheimer and then Barbie, all joy, or Barbie and Oppenheimer, less joy. But I want to know who goes to see the movie about a bomb blowing the shit out of people before or after they saw Barbie. Like I have all this up and feel great. And they're like, ah, oh, I'm just going to be depressed now. Because they have to get rid of all the pink that they just saw in order to see other colors again. Or maybe. They just like blowing shit up. That's why we played with toys that had actual working missile projectiles. If you have <laughs> friends that come out of Oppenheimer and they and they are smiling, get new friends. That's all I'm going to say. Just get some Truly. new ones. New ones. Time to restock. Time to restock. <laughs> like they're a vending machine. They are. Friends are a vending machine. I'll Which make sure to record. Is? I'll record my reaction as I walk out for y'all. <laughs> Don't smile. All right. Bye. 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 Okay, John.